Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading channel. If this is the first time you are visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. If today is your birthday, happy birthday to you. fast uh, video another Wednesday quickie but before we start Elpida and I would like to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving happy Thanksgiving and we hope you and your family enjoy hopefully your time off hopefully everyone has a time off tomorrow right mm -hmm. and we are going to see you again on the weekend it is cold in South Carolina so we are in my office instead of being in the wild outdoors right yeah and one of the things that uh, it's important especially if you are starting now in woodworking is wood selection, right? Mm -hmm. And understanding a little bit about species. So today's episode will be talking about wood. So here we have five uh, species of wood, one softwood and four uh, hardwoods. Can you determine which is which? Soft. <laughs> is your finger in the frame? It is soft okay. and the rest are the hard. Now you notice all of them are the same uh, dimension, right? Yep. And the, we, we want them that for this exercise. And here is what, what we have. We have Paducah or Paduk. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's a very nice, colorful wood. And this is without any finish, by the way, right? Mm -hmm. They really pop with, with any finish. And if you want to see before you finish how a, a piece of wood will look, you can wet it, right? Okay. Put a little water on a, a towel and wet it. Hardwood again. The next hardwood is marbo, merbo. And this is merbo here. And you can see very, very tight grain, right? Mm -hmm. Is it visible there? Yep. And this is purple heart. It's a beautiful wood, but I've noticed it fades fairly fast. Like when I first got it, it was really, really purple. Yeah, it was really dark, and now it's more like a pinkish color. So... This wood, you will need to finish it and then protect it with a poly if you care about the look of it, right? Mm -hmm. It seems that all wood grays, by the way, that is not unique to Purple Heart, but Purple Heart uses its purpleness. Is that a term? Yes, purpleness. <laughs> Very quickly. As someone who likes purple, that's definitely a term. Right. And one of my favorite woods, and this is zebra. Zebra wood, right? Mm -hmm. I love this wood, don't you? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just beautiful. And lastly, and you can see how it differs when you cut it the piece makes a common wood. This is pine. Mm -hmm. And almost immediately, let's which is a good comparison, this to see the hard woods and the soft wood, right? Here is the soft wood, this is pine, and you can see the grain here, see the distance here? Mm -hmm. And look how tight. Especially the boys, right? Mm -hmm. This one. So you can see the difference. It's also very common. I'm going to try and and give you an edge grain. Is it visible? Mm -hmm. And you can see the difference on how tight the fibers of the wood are, right? Yeah. Now this makes the hardwood very, very uh, strong, right? Mm -hmm. But also it is very tough on your equipment, right? It will go through blades much faster than the softwood will. It is harder to cut, it's harder to say. It tends to have a sharper edge to it. I mean, I don't know if you can see it there. I mean, this is pretty sharp, but you can see how better defined the hardwood is, right? Is it visible on the, I don't know if it is visible on the video or not, but in person you can see it. Right now, I mean, it looks like a very sharp edge, but it's just because it's a nicely milled piece that you receive. Right. Well, I milled this very nicely. Thank oh, you, you did? Very much. Yes. You did? Okay. Well, this good. I made before you arrived, actually. Okay. Well, it looks good. Using, for the first time in over a year, our bandsaw. The bandsaw? Yeah, this is bandsaw. I want to make an episode to talk about the myth of the bandsaw drifting. What you cannot do good work with bandsaw. Okay, this is, this edge is bandsaw. This was a two by three, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I started with. Okay. And... This is bandsaw. 
Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, it looks pretty good, but this is not the episode for today, however. Right. So when you should use hardwood and when you should use softwood? If you are now starting, if you're a beginner woodworker, stick with softwood. First of all, it is much cheaper, especially now with the crazy wood prices, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're looking probably at $3,000 worth of wood on my desk. <laughs> I'm joking, but you know. But in reality, the exotic so-called woods, those are called exotic woods, right? Mm -hmm. And I was trying to make a, a cedar a plank as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was not successful <clears throat> because cedar is, is considered as an exotic wood, but we have tons of it in our in our right. forest here. We just so. have to take a little walk out there and we get it. Well, I had the wood, I just could not mill it correctly because I had it as a at a round, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't mill it correctly. But that's that's okay. So the exotic woods, zebra, paduka, purple heart, and merbo. Merbo, I think it's what you call it. It's M E R B A U. How would you pronounce it? Merbo. Um, are, are exotic hardwoods. So I would say if you're a beginner, don't get in the, into them. First of all, if you make a mistake, you will cry because they're so expensive. Yes. Like realistically now, what you see here, with the exception of the softwood in the middle, those four pieces of wood are $30. In this dimension, by the way. We're talking about eight foot boards. Right. So you can see how expensive that wood can get, right? Mm -hmm. So mistakes can be very costly and you cannot drive to your local store and replenish it if you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. How do we know that we can go and do that? And we don't, <laughs> we don't make mistakes, do we? No. <laughs> Actually, generally, we don't make mistakes. On occasion, we'll miscalculate... Um, what do we miscalculate? The amount we need, right? We don't have enough because I like to be very tight my calculations but anyway but yeah stay with this wood it's cheaper it works easier your equipment will last longer but by equipment i mean blades primarily right mm -hmm. now granted on the same token if you do it a lot i presume as a diy or you don't but if you do it a lot it will also wear down your your motors much more the the hardwoods versus the softwood right mm -hmm. so there are of course there are some advantages in the hardwoods but you can see you can make much better connections here because again the, the grain is much tighter, right? Mm -hmm. So if I screw here, I don't have as good a connection as you if screw? I screw here. Yeah, as you screw. screw? Oh. Yeah, as I place a screw. I was just trying to figure out what you were talking about. A screw. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. It wasn't in the gutter. I was just trying to figure out what you were talking about. If you place a screw, if you screw. Okay. If you screw there. Okay. Yeah, because this is uh, so thin it doesn't have as much hold as you will have here right okay like here you're going to have the whole the same holding power as you will have on a soft wood side edge okay so much much stronger which is the reason why uh often furniture makers will use those exotic woods to make couches and chairs and things like that even when this wood is not visible mm -hmm. it just will last longer the joint will not come apart because it is so much tighter, the wood grain is so much tighter. Okay. Uh, in any case, what else you would like to know if you were a beginner woodworker about wood? Depending on your, where you live, some hardwood might be fairly inexpensive in your area. Again, in our area, cedar is not expensive at all. Like even in the store, we can buy cedar very cheap, right? Mm -hmm. Because it is locally sourced wood, very inexpensive. In some parts of the country, cedar will be very expensive, right? Right. Specifically red cedar, like we have in the back. I mean, for us, if we learn how to mill it, it can be free, potentially. Mm -hmm. We haven't learned how to mill it yet, but, you know, as evidenced by today's failure. But we're, we're working on that. But anyway, I will, again, I will recommend to stay away from hardwoods when you're a beginner woodworker. It's much cheaper to make mistakes here. More forgiving wood, more pliable, easier to work on. I mean, you have seen us very often just using uh, uh, clamps to straighten a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to do that with this. No? No. Mm. It, 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 the wood is so dense that it's just not possible, right? Okay. So there are some advantages. When you get more comfortable, definitely you can go to hardwoods. And those, for example, will make awesome uh, boxes, jewelry boxes, things of this nature, you know? Mm-hmm. The other thing, of course, is as long as you're using uh, 
basic uh, entry level tools, for example, our blade will need at least half of that. If we, if we try to mill it in two pieces, yeah, we got in the middle, we're going to, to waste a lot of material, right? Unless you're using the bandsaw. Right, unless you're using less, the bandsaw. But a typical table saw would, yeah, take quite so a bit. So you have to rethink your tooling and, and what tools you require. And, and a lot of time, if you go to furniture maker shops, they use bandsaws versus table saws for that reason, right? A bandsaw, I mean, we've always known it, even on the softwood, mm -hmm. you waste much less wood. Right. Or what, what is the other saw we have there? The sewing machine. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, My, can't remember. I can't remember what it's called either. Uh, it's called a... Eh? We can edit it yeah. here. I'll edit, put the name here. Edit it there because neither one of us can remember. I can edit it. But there are shows that are better uh, fitted to, to waste less wood, right? Mm -hmm. And definitely, if you're using these woods, using a hand saw, like our Japanese saw will, use, will waste very little right. material from here. But as a beginner... You're going to waste a lot of material anyway. I mean, I'm not saying that to be flippant about it, but when we started, we were horrible. I mean, you know, we wasted food, we wasted wood, we did things wrong, we measured wrong. Anyway, well, it's anything all else? part of the learning curve, though, right. isn't it? Anything else you think we need to, to mention about wood? Well, folks, we need to go and cook for Thanksgiving. And by we, I mean Mrs. Wizard and Alpida. I'm not doing any cooking, but mm. but I promise I, I will do eating. that's a bad division of labor. I, I'll do the eating. How about it? Mm. I, I will make it up tomorrow in eating. I reiterate, it's a bad <laughs> division of labor. In any case, and I don't know if you can see it. I mean, is it visible that this is not as hard edge as this? Or it's it not looks, really. Okay, it's not. in the. I don't know. You can see it probably in, in person. It is just a softer. This is almost like the razor sharp. If you touch it, probably. I guess I did too good of a job because... This will touch it for a moment. Yeah, that's what I said. And then it, that's the... it, it seems like it's pretty sharp, all things considered, for a soft wood. I overdid it. I, mm -hmm. I milled it better than I thought. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd appreciate the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down twice. Share, like, subscribe, and let us know what else you might want to watch in future episodes of the Urban Homesteading Channel. From Dr. Wizard and Peter and the Urban Homesteading Channel, Stay safe, wash your hands, put your masks on, and we're going to talk to you soon in another episode. Stay safe, friends.